Doing an analysis is uh, sometimes said to have four stages, and they are confession, elucidation, education, and transformation. So I guess we're starting with the confession bit. Um, we'll see whether we get to transformation. I doubt it. So my confession bit is uh, I've been an art therapist or art psychotherapist. They're both, both titles in use. I tend to prefer um, the rather more workaday art therapist title um, for So Help Me, uh, getting on for 40 years. Worked in a lot of contexts in that time, but for most of my career, if anybody had ever told me that I would be in the same job um, for 20 years when I was young and impatient, I would not have believed that I was capable of that. I have a very low boredom threshold. And I think it says something about art therapy that I was in the same job in the arts therapy service for Devon Partnership NHS Trust here in Exeter for that length of time. And I never got bored with it. Um, and art therapy, when it gets you, has that quality of um, you need a new theory for every person that walks through the door. So how can that possibly ever get boring? Um, and the creative resilience and resourcefulness of people that comes out through combining these things of psychotherapy and art making is invariably full of surprise, sometimes real pain and difficulty too. But there's a real principle involved here that if we're addressing people's creativity, then we are addressing the um, bit of them that is most striving to be health, healthy, most striving for balance. That's what um, we're putting in the service of the presumption of therapy that something is not right, otherwise people wouldn't be in therapy. And that takes us really, um, I guess I guess I should say something about how insider art came out of that, which is that the other uh, co-director of insider art, Karen Huckbell and myself, she also worked in the NHS as an art psychotherapist. Her work was with children and young people. My work was with adults. And it all started because we were both fielding so many requests from people. Can I come and see what you do? Um, can I come and do a placement with you? Um, those sorts of things. And I'm afraid that the answer was no. Um, we did have uh, uh, students on placements, but students who were doing uh, an art therapy training and that was a really committed process, so somebody would be with us for several months and really getting in, involved in the work. It's not something that you can drop in on, but the requests were really um, legitimate ones. So insider art, the training aspect of our work was a response to that need. So for the, till COVID got in the way, uh, we had run a foundation course in art therapy for, God, 20, 20 plus years, and something like 500 people had uh, done that course, despite the fact that it didn't actually qualify anybody to do anything, as we were absolutely explicitly clear about. Um, the art therapy training is a two-year full-time three-year part-time postgraduate training. It is huge. And the foundation course that we were offering was by comparison, tiny. So it, it just need, we needed to be clear about that. But many people went on from that course to do um, terribly interesting and related things in the whole field of arts and health. And nobody owns creativity, and nobody owns the benefit of creativity to health. There are 
a myriad of ways in which that can be very constructively worked with. But if you want to do, be a psychotherapist, you need to train as a psychotherapist. And that's a different scale of undertaking altogether. So the course in question that we've uh, cooked up with Iron Mill is uh, we were always prided ourselves on taking student feedback very seriously and continually adapting the course to what people told us. And what people told us over many years was that of all the different bits and pieces of theoretical foundation that we were offering, what would you like more of? And people said, Jung. And I always wanted to, um, to address that need. It's something I have a particular enthusiasm in and, uh, and background in too. Um, but we just never got round to doing it. So when we started talking with uh, Iron Mill about what to do, that seemed like a really good starting place. So it would help if people have done the foundation course, but that's by no means necessary. But we need to be clear that this is a, a CPD, continuing professional development sort of level, level, level of course. It's not a kind of come in at the beginning uh kind of a course that's that's where it's pitched so uh the, 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 you know that's what the course is it's a way into Jung with a big emphasis on his work on creativity and there's an argument to this i'm going to argue that Jung, in effect invented art therapy he was the first art therapist and I can back that up. But what we need to say from the starting point is a little bit about who Jung was, starting with what his dates were, which were 1875 to 1963. Now, the critical work for the development of art therapy actually happened more or less in the years of the First World War. So we're talking about 100 years plus ago now. Now, anyone who was working at that time, we are all creatures of our time, and to some extent, Jung was too. So, it was a very different time, a very different culture. But in some ways, he was radically ahead of his time. And what I want to do in this course is to pick up some of the areas where he intu intuitively was picking up a lot of things that we now have a really coherent evidence base for, but that was not available to him at that time. He was dead right, but he couldn't prove it. And his efforts to prove it didn't always um, uh, go particularly well. So my intention is to take it back to uh, the basics, if, if, if you like, of what is still really valid about what he said, and um, to pay less attention to aspects of it. And his work is huge. The collective works are much bigger than my outstretched arms on a shelf. The guy was unbelievably prolific, wrote in German and, uh, uh, and English. So huge amount of work, we're only going to scratch the surface of it. I hope to give a decent introduction to that idea. And if there's one idea that I'd like to try and interest you in now, it's that Jung was way ahead of his time, a systems thinker. He thought about the psyche, he, he thought about psychology as being a self-regulating system which was always trying to balance itself. He didn't see therapy as something that you did to people. He saw therapy as a space that you held, which allowed people to unfold along the line of their own capacity to heal. And I think that's an idea that is as relevant now as it was then. Um, how am I doing for time, Faye? 
absolutely fine. Give me another five minutes. Yes, another five minutes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to say something. This uh, Jung's autobiography, Memories, Dreams and Reflections, is a kind of key text for the course. It comes with a health warning. Um, it, it, all autobiographies are um, elements of how we would like to see ourselves. Uh, so it, 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 the, there were many sides to you. I mean, they're not all in the autobiography, as you would expect. But the claim I've just made that Jung was the first art therapist, art therapists are dual trained. We almost always have an art degree first and a postgraduate psychotherapy training second. And the art degree bit of it is really important. I want to give you something about what Jung said about the foundation of his thinking in art making. He painted, he painted a lot um, uh, and we'll be going into that a bit on, on the course. Now, here's what he says about the importance to his thinking of the painting. The years when I was pursuing my inner images were the most important in my life. In them, everything essential was decided. It all began then. The later details are only supplements and clarifications of the material that burst forth from the unconscious and at first swamped me. It was the primer materia for a lifetime's work. So in my claim that Jung was the first art therapist is partly based in his own, uh, what he's saying here was that the painting came first, the thinking and the theory and the development of an approach to psychotherapy came after that. So we will be looking into that um, a little bit more. And I want to give you one more bit from the horse's mouth itself about what, how he saw the processes of creativity and therapy and how they were absolutely served one another. He wrote, the key is this, we must be able to let things happen in the psyche. For us, this becomes a real art of which few people know anything. Consciousness is forever interfering, helping, correcting and negating and never leaving the simple growth of the psychic processes in peace. It would be simple enough thing to do if only simplicity were not the most difficult of all things. And I think that is an extraordinary insight and a way into what the Jungian approach to art making in the service of therapy is, that it's about creating a vessel that is then a container for the way that the unconscious will itself work to self-correct. It's a very difficult process to describe. It is a truly awesome one to witness. And it is something that I think can inform any approach to working with people, is a trust in those processes. This is not as easy as it sounds, as Jung said, it's anxiety provoking. My great mentor in art therapy, Patsy Nell Hall, I can still hear her voice and I think the words are written on my heart. She would say, stay with the not knowing. And that's how creativity works. It's also a hell of a lot of how therapy works. And it's interesting that in terms of psychotherapy, the all the outcome research, therapists don't always like this being pointed out because we're very attached to our theories and our ideas about what might be happening. And all of the outcome research says that the key thing for a good outcome to psychotherapy is actually the holding vessel, 
that happens between the therapist and the person that they are working with. The theory matters less. It's about staying with the not knowing and having the confidence and trust in that process to allow things to grow. And the artwork is just the most fantastic vessel where that can happen. 